Hi there, this is Anmesh from Piximperfect and today we're going to learn how to color grade like your favorite movie in Photoshop. However, I'm going to tell you something up front. There is no secret trick, magic tool or amazing technique to do this. The secret lies in the observation. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and I have two popular examples for you. One from The Matrix. Have you heard of The Matrix? Honestly, I haven't seen the movie, but everybody just talks about it. So I, I know I need to. And the other one is from Mad Max Fury Road. If you have seen the movie, just let me know down in the comments below. For this image, we will try to recreate the color grading style of The Matrix. So all we need to do is to get a screenshot from the movie. Doesn't matter what quality is that, but just get a screenshot. Just drag it and drop it over the canvas, just like this. Let's make it a little bigger. The quality doesn't really matter. All that matters is the color. All right, the colors should be fine. Let's zoom in. And now we will create adjustment layers between these two layers, the background layer in which we have our subject and the screenshot to be able to match the background layer with that of the screenshot. All right, so let's first of all create a curves adjustment layer. First things first, we need to match the brightness. So the overall brightness of the image, the sample image that we have should be matched with that of the screenshot. So let's just observe it. Have a look at the highlights, supreme highlights. How are they? They're super bright. In this, the supreme highlights are not very bright. So we need to make it darker. So on the right hand side on the curves, we have the highlights and on the left hand side, we have the shadows. So take the highlights down the extreme ones, just like that. Now it's all soft. Now let's decrease the overall brightness. Yes, it looks fine. Now let's talk about the dark areas. How are the dark areas? They're totally black here. So we will take this to the left, just like that. Okay. We have matched most of the brightness. However, when we have made this darker, let's make it even more darker. All right, so when we have made it darker, it has to be refilled with something because here, the highlights have been made darker, but it's been refilled with a little bit of green. So we'll go to the green channel and let's add some green to the highlights a little bit, just like that. All right, now let's go back to RGB. I think it needs to be darkened even more. All right. Okay, now it looks fine. All right, it looks fine to me. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. And now only the brightness has been adjusted with a little bit of green. Let's have a look at the other areas. Have a look at this white area. It has a little bit of blue tint to it, right? And although most of it is green, the skin tones still have their original color a little bit of it. So let's add a selective color adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose selective color. Now, first of all, let's go to the whites. So we are targeting the whites. Okay, let's choose white. You can choose relative or absolute. Absolute is harsh, relative is a little mild. Okay, so I'm gonna choose absolute because I wanna be a little harsh. And and let's give it a blue look. See, this is blue, so I'm gonna give it blue. So how do we get blue? There's no blue here. Just remember the opposites. RGB is the opposite of CMY. Red is the opposite of cyan. Green is the opposite of magenta. And blue is the opposite of yellow. So if you want to add blue, you would decrease yellow because yellow is the opposite of blue. All right. So see the page here, it should be matched with that. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now, let's try it relative. Okay, it's much better. All right, looks great. Now let's go to neutrals. Now we will be affecting the neutrals. Let's increase green in it. How do we increase the green? Decrease the magenta. Magenta is the opposite of green. So simply decrease the magenta. Let's add a little bit of green to it. It looks fine. Now, the best way to find out which values match is take it all the way to the right. Does it look better closer to this or take it all the way to the left? Does this look closer to it? No, the right side looked more closer to it. So I'll just bring it back to neutral and slowly and gradually take it to the right a little bit. Okay, matching, matching, 
the right side was matching more. So I'm going to take it a little to the right. Matching, matching. I'm going to keep it at that. That's kind of too much. Now let's have a look at the blacks. Matching, matching. Of course, the right hand side. All right, there we go. Don't forget to look at the image. We'll add a little touch of green to it. Add a little yellow. Interesting. I'm sorry, I need to stop just to remind you that time to time we need to take a break and get back to the image. Sometimes we overdo things and we need a new perspective, refreshed perspective. So take breaks, all right? So let's work with the blacks. Let's do a little bit of that. Okay, now let's get to the skin tone. Now what is the skin tone? Red. Let's add a little red to it, but there's no red. Just decrease cyan. You can also decrease it from here. All right, it looks great. What about magenta? A little bit of it. So right now we are targeting only the red areas. less contrast on the skin as you can see there's less contrast here all right let's go to the yellows a little bit of it okay it looks fine now let's have a look at the before and after so this is the before and this is the after the matrix color you know what i guess it's missing a little bit of highlight so i'm going to add one more curves adjustment layer and add a little highlight to it just like that okay it looks much better that way now we overdid it i guess so let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer and let's decrease the saturation i think it's too much a little bit just like that and it looks so much more better all right so all we did was kept it at the top kept the matrix or your favorite movie screenshot at the top and just work your way through it there's no secret technique but it's the observation, looking at the highlights, looking at the midtones, looking at the shadows, looking at different shades of different colors and which area is what. At this moment, you know what I think? I think the face is too bright. So we're gonna create one more curves adjustment layer. This is just playing along. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer and just look at the face, right? So face has a little decreased contrast, right? And maybe we'll make it a little brighter from here, decrease it from there. All right, it looks much better, but the other areas look bad. So we're gonna select the mask, press Control or Command I, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white, and just paint on with white, just like that. All right, the face should be matching. Let's go to the highlights. Let's go to blues and let's just decrease the blues from the highlights. I think it, the blue is too much. All right. It looks so much more better. Let's have a look at the before and after. Let's turn this off. We don't need this anymore. So this is the before and this is the matrix color. Interesting, isn't it? So let's go to our next example. In this example, we will try to recreate the color grading style of Mad Max Fury Road. So let's bring in the screenshot. Now, I'm going to show you something which you might take away from this example. All right. So it doesn't matter how many adjustment layers you add. It also doesn't matter which adjustment layer you add. It's all about observation. And that's why we will try to do it with just one curves adjustment layer, okay? So I'm gonna keep it here. Make sure it's big enough so that the faces are comparable. So we're gonna keep it at that. And that's all we need, all right? Let's place it for matching, okay. Let's create a curves adjustment layer. First of all, it's all about the brightness, okay? So with the help of the hand tool, see the highlights, they're too bright. So I'm gonna bring the highlights down like that. Okay. But what about the shadows? The shadows are very dark. So I'm gonna take in the shadow, I'm gonna take in dark, just like that. Now, the highlights that I took down is filled in here with yellow. So I'm gonna go to the blue channel, and decrease the blue. Why? Because the opposite of blue is yellow. So let's get it yellowish. 
All right, now I'm gonna go to RGB again to increase it. I think I decreased it so very much. Okay. If you look at the highlights, it also has a little bit of red. So let's go to red and increase it in the highlights, just like that. Okay, we are basically done, right? No, we are not. We have to do a hell lot. So what about the greens? Let's take down the greens a little bit because when we added the yellow, it was too greenish. So let's go back to blues again and add more yellow to it. All right, now we are getting somewhere. Now, have a look at the sand. We need to match it, right? Okay, so what does this sand have? More yellow, so let's, with the, with the help of the hand tool, just click and drag it down to decrease the blue. All right, okay, looks great. This color is a little greenish. So we'll go to the green channel and click and drag it down to take down the green. Now, see the sand is matching now? Let's go to red. What about red? Let's just try to increase and decrease red and see which one helps. If I increase the red, it's matching, or if I decrease the red, it's matching. Let's increase the red a little bit in the highlights and decrease it in the shadows a little bit, just like that. It's looking much cool, cooler. and. I think we are pretty much good to go. If you have a look at it, if we compare it, if I bring it right here, have a look. It's pretty much matching. I know, I know, I need to make it a little smaller so that you can compare. All right, there you go. Isn't it cool? Now I know it's too contrasty because of the sunlight in this image, but we can work through it. We can make the shadows a little brighter and make this a little darker, just like that. And maybe have a little bit of contrast. Okay, now let's go to the red channel and probably add a little bit of red here. All right, there we go. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after, just like the Mad Max Fury Road. So again, I'm gonna go back to RGB and probably let's just, let's just add a little highlight to it. Okay, this is something which you might come again and again to. And there you have it, here's the before. General, here's the Mad Max Fury Road color grading. Now, even though I did it with one, it doesn't hurt if we add one more, right? So let us let me show you how to add the gradient map in this case. So let's go ahead and add a gradient map adjustment layer, okay? So the right-hand side is the highlight and the left-hand side is the shadow. So if we choose white, which is the default, and black as the highlight and the shadow, so it becomes black and white, right? So the highlights are painted in white and the shadows in black. So we're gonna click, single click here, and then we're gonna sample the right and the left hand side. So double click here, and let's sample this color, but it's not sampling. Why is it not sampling? Let's just cancel this, because the mask is selected and the mask is white. We need to select this, and then let's just sample the right hand side. We'll double click here, and we'll sample this color as a highlight. Okay, and for the shadow, we'll sample a dark color like that, or maybe make it more oranges. And we can change this later, does really matter, okay? More saturated, orange-ish color. All right, looks pretty good. Hit okay, hit okay again. And then just simply decrease the opacity to add much more Fury Road awesomeness to it. So there you go. Have a look. So here is the after, the Mad Max effect, and here's the before, and here's the after. Now at the end, do not forget to turn this thing off and then save your image. So that's how to color grade like any movie in Photoshop. There is no predetermined steps that we need to follow. It's all about observation. Observe the highlights, the midtones, the shadows, how colors are shown. What about red? In some movies, there are some colors which are selective. If you have ever watched the movie Sin City, you'll see the perfect use of selective color. There's a man injured and only the blood is red. Everything else is black and white and highly dramatic. When you watch the movie, do enjoy the movie. But from now on, also pay attention to color grading as well because the people who make it really work hard at it. So that's all for this video. If this video helped you, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick, 
or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.